Welcome to the Virginia Association for Collegiate Registrars and Admission Officers Virtual Transfer College Fair. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so please be sure to sign up for additional sessions. The presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at strivescan.com slash Virginia. And now I'd like to turn it over to our presenters. And up first is Norfolk State University. Hello, everyone. My name is uh, Derek Henry. And um, first of all, I just want to say thank you for uh, the invitation. Um, I am a transfer counselor here at Norfolk State University. Um, and I definitely want to sh share some information about Norfolk State with you. Um, and I do have a brief little slide presentation so you can kind of get an idea of where we are. Let me just start off by saying Norfolk State University is a comprehensive urban public institution um, where we are committed to transforming students' lives through exemplary teaching, research, and service, offering a supportive academic and cultural diverse environment for all. The university empowers its students to turn their aspirations into reality and achieve their full potential as well-rounded and resourceful citizens and leaders of the 21st century. A little bit about Norfolk State. We are located in Norfolk, Virginia. And oh, let me just do this right quick. All right, located in uh, Norfolk, Virginia. And um, if you wanna know where we are, we are like 15 minutes away from downtown Norfolk, uh, 15 minutes away from Virginia Beach. Norfolk is one of the oldest cities in Hampton Roads and is considered to be a historic urban financial and cultural center of the region. For our transfer students, the admission requirements for Norfolk State, um, our average uh, student will transfer comes in with a two, eight, five, more like a three and um, 20 credit hours. But for admissions to Norfolk State, we just require a 2.0 GPA with 12 credit um, college credit level hours. If you don't meet those requirements, admission requirements, um, we will ask for your high school, um, high school transcript. And again, looking for a minimum of 880 or 17 on your SAT required transferring less than 12 credit hours for any students that are under 21. Um, official transcripts from colleges and universities attended must be submitted to the institution um, to the um, Office of Transfer Admissions and Services. And of course, the main way to submit transcripts to us is electronically um, through Parchment, National Student, Clearinghouse, uh, or eScript. Um, for our transfer students, uh, the admissions process, once you submit us an application, then you just need to submit us all official college transcripts from your universities that you've attended prior to that. And we will um, review your transcripts, render your decision, and you will also receive um, in your admission packet um, our certificate of advanced standing to let you know which class is transferred to Norfolk State. Um, and we call it a certificate of advanced standing. Um, that way you will have an opportunity to actually see the courses that have transferred to the institution before making a decision on enrollment. Um, undergraduate majors here at Norfolk State University, we have 31 undergraduate majors, 18 master, doctorate, and professional programs, um, over 100 clubs and organizations. Our student-teacher ratio is 18 to 1, and we're uh, currently on an acreage of 134 acres, um, but we are currently expanding. We plan to build a new building on campus um, for the next, until 2024. Uh, we are HBCU, but we are not your typical HBCU. We really do bridge the past um, and the, in the future and fuse it together. Um, so if I had to describe Norfolk State, um, the environment, I would say kind of like urban meets beach kind of, uh, kind of vibe going on here at Norfolk State. Uh, the enrollment stats, just to show you a few, we have a little on um, 5,415 total enrollment. And there's the student female to male ratio. Um, our population for undergrads and graduate students. Um, In-state tuition, out-of-state tuition, 
um, for Norfolk State. And I'll put my information in the chat so that if any interested students would like further information, feel free to get in contact me, contact with me with that as well. Um, some of our top programs with um, transfer students, of course, um, education, business, College of Liberal Arts, social work in um, College of Science, Engineering and Technology. This is just some information on what of our students do once um, entered into the university. Our priority deadline for fall um, is of course May 1st. We are a rolling enrollment school. So basically that means that we will continue to um, admit students until we are given the, the, red, the red sign there. But we definitely believe in our students. We see the future in our students. There's my contact information at the bottom. Um, so feel free to get in contact with me via um, phone or email, and I will be more than happy to share more information with you about Norfolk State University. Thank you so much for your time. Great, thank you so much, Derek. And next up is Marymount Manhattan College. Sorry about that. Hi, how are you? Um, I'm Greg Davis. Um, <clears throat> I had to close out a few screens. Um, I am the Assistant Director of Transfer Admission here at Marymount Manhattan College. Um, essentially, I am a, a basically a, a one man team. So um, it is just me. So any students that are interested, you will be in contact with me and I will help you through that process as we go forward. So I'll go ahead and share uh, my screen. So I have a presentation as well. All right, so um, basically what you're seeing right now on your screen is the front entrance of Marymount Manhattan College. Um, one thing about us, um, we're a small liberal arts school located right in Manhattan, New York City. So we're located right on the Upper East Side, about four, uh, four avenues away from Central Park. Um, so definitely a nice location. The first thing that you'll see is that we're not your uh, kind of typical college campus, very much a city campus feel. Um, you may even be walking down the block and, and not realize that you walk past our college unless you look up and see our big flags, uh, just because you'll see that we are kind of in grain and in between uh, the townhomes and, and, and brownstones of, of New York City. A little bit about MMC. So as you'll see on the right hand side, something that we always point out is our location. So you'll see um, Marymount Manhattan College um, in that top right, that blue um, emblem there. You'll see again, we're about four avenues away from Central Park. Um, and then you'll see our two residence halls that are located throughout the city. There's 55th Street, um, which is 16 blocks down from where we're located and then Cooper Square, um, which is a bit further downtown in the East Village neighborhood. Um, one thing I'll say about Manhattan, even though it's small in terms of area, each pocket definitely has its own vibe its own feel to it. So students actually like that they have the opportunity to possibly live um, in two different areas of New York City um, while still never being no longer than 20 minutes away. Um, so uh, in terms of student wise, we're, we're just we're, we're pretty small, we're under 1900. So it definitely gives you that small school feel. Um, we have a 11 to 1 student to faculty ratio and about our average class size is anywhere from 12 to 15. So um, most of our classes are a lot more of discussion style based as opposed to lecture style based and you're definitely getting a bit more of a personalized feel. With that, with those students, um, we have students from just about all over 49 states and 33 countries. So for a smaller school in terms of where students are coming from is, is definitely all over. Um, in terms of um, student groups, we have about over 50 different uh, student clubs and organizations. So that's definitely how our students get involved on campus. Everything from um, our uh, Marymount Muscle, which is our um, community service club that does stuff throughout New York City to every to, to clubs around uh, just about every different major. Um, you'll see there, um, transfer credits up to 90 credits accepted. So you'll see that we definitely have a pretty flexible transfer credit policy um, for any classes that a C or above is maintained. So that's definitely something uh, to, to look out for as a transfer student. So we have about 30 majors and 40 minors. Um, we separate them into five different academic divisions. Uh, those are our, our business division, commu uh, communication, uh, and communication and film, our sciences, um, our um, uh, humanities and social sciences, and then our performing arts. Um, so you'll see just kind of a, across the, the majors there, um, really kind of a, a pretty deep delve into, into different things you, you can you can get at, attracted to. Um, I would say our school is about 50% um, performing arts, 50% liberal arts. So um, definitely a good mix there in terms of, um, you know, what our students are getting involved in and uh, uh, what our students are um, 
interested in. I would say right now, currently about 60 to 65 percent of students have either have a double major or minor. So a lot of different options to explore different interests. So City Edge, um, kind of being in New York City, we're not just the type of school that says, you know, come to New York City and you'll find internships, just like every other school can say in New York City. Um, City Edge is basically a program where you have City City Edge embedded courses in your major. So for example, some of our international studies students are able to take courses at the UN. Some of our photography students are taking courses at a photography institute um, located near Bryant Park. Um, our theater and dance students are taking uh, classes at professional studios across New York City. So these are embedded courses that really kind of aim to get you out and about throughout New York City. So these are just some important dates. Um, so basically for transfers, um, we're always rolling on a, on a we're always on a rolling admissions basis. So transfers can apply anytime. Um, really, I mean, we, we recommend a, a deadline of May 1st, um, just because uh, that's when uh, uh, the deposit deadline is will be due and, and housing deadline. Um, but you'll just see there um, average transfer GPA coming in is about a 3.3. Um, and then you'll see the application requirements there. Um, that's our general application requirements. The only difference being a transfer student. Um, we will not need your uh, your official high school transcript or your SAT or ACT scores. So unless you've taken less than 12 college credits, really, if you've taken more at that point, we're really just going to need the application, um, the essay and a letter of recommendation there. This is the average cost to attend MMC. So um, total cost for tuition um, plus room and boards is for a student living on campus is right around 56,300 per year. Um, tuition and fees in itself is around 37,400. Room and board is just under 19,000, bringing the total cost again for a student living on campus to around 56K per year. So it still does make us one of the more affordable private schools in the New York City area. Um, what I wanna point out on this in terms of scholarships, transfer scholarships uh, range anywhere from three to $13,000 per year year and it's nothing extra that you need to apply for talent scholarships for our art dance and theater students since those are either audition or interview based to get in and lastly this is just our main information here so you'll see um, the admissions email inbox right there feel free to always email and or call and you'll be connected right to me and we are offering uh, the fee waiver code griffin strong 21 for any students that are still interested in applying for fall uh, definitely take that code for the common app as we are still accepting applications Thank you. All right, thank you very much. And next up is the University of North Carolina at Charlotte. Awesome, thank you, Matt. So I'll go ahead and share my screen here. All right, perfect. So hello, everyone. My name is Megan Lee, and I'm a transfer admissions counselor here at UNC Charlotte and a proud UNC Charlotte alum. So I'm very excited to be here with you all and to share a little bit about UNC Charlotte and all that we have to offer. So we are one of 16 schools in the UNC public school system, but what makes us unique is we are North Carolina's urban research university. So urban because of our proximity, about nine miles from Charlotte city center, which affords our students a wealth of opportunities in the form of experiential hands-on learning, uh, whether it's an internship, a co-op experience, or maybe a faculty-led study abroad. Um, being in the city of Charlotte, we are the second largest financial center right behind New York City, as well as the largest city in North Carolina. So again, many uh, opportunities available to our students because of our location. We're also a research intensive institution, meaning our faculty and students alike are actively engaged in research both on and off our campus. And it's truly embedded into our campus culture as an institution. So regardless of major, you'll have those research, opportunities and resume building experiences. We are also North Carolina's largest transfer institution. So I love to highlight this fact because we want you all to know as transfer students, there's a lot of you here at Niner Nation and we want you to feel at home and also to know that there's so many resources here to help you succeed. We're also the state's fastest growing university. We have built 13 new buildings in the past seven years alone, uh, including but not limited to our new science building, our new university recreation center, which is 148,000 square feet of rec space. Um, so our students love our modern facilities. They're designed with today's students in mind, whether it's our lab spaces, our residence halls, or classrooms. 
Um, and speaking of our student body in a little more depth, uh, we are the second largest uh, institution in the UNC system based on enrollment. So we have a little over 30,000 students here at UNC Charlotte. Um, again, our undergraduate population is about 24,000 students and transfers are making up half of those students. Uh, we do have a very diverse student body, which we're very proud of. Our students come from all over the globe. Uh, 49 states are represented and 40% of our population self-identify as coming from an underrepresented population. Um, even though we're a large university, our average class size is 35 students and we have a 19 to one student faculty ratio. Um, a lot of times my transfers are at, at an advantage when it comes to class size because you all have knocked out your general education requirements, which tend to be the largest classes here at UNC Charlotte. Uh, we also have a very rich academic experience. We offer 171 undergraduate majors. Definitely don't have time to go through all of those, but some popular transfer majors are found in our Belt College of Business, our College of Computing and Informatics, our Lee College of Engineering, as well as our College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, which houses our psychology and biology programs. Uh, in addition to our academic experience, we have a rich student experience here. Again, 90% of our students participate in some form of hands-on experiential learning experience. Um, and we have over 400 clubs and student orgs. Uh, we have over 50 intramural and club sports teams, 18 division one sports teams, and over 70 study abroad locations. We also have a connection to the city through our light rail system, which you all can see on the screen here. It comes to campus over 100 times a day. So whether you have an internship in Uptown Charlotte, or maybe you just wanna check out some of the museums or art districts in our city, uh, these opportunities are available to you free of cost with your student ID card. All right, so what does it take to transfer to UNC Charlotte? We're looking for at least 24 transferable credits at a minimum 2.0 cumulative GPA, and then for you to be in good academic standing with your most recent university. Uh, college math is not required, but it is highly, highly recommended, especially for my STEM majors. We do have some competitive majors here at UNC Charlotte that have slightly higher admissions criteria, so definitely reach out to our office or myself to discuss those. Um, our application deadlines are as follows. We do accept transfer students all throughout the year. So if you're interested in 2021, that application is available for you. Uh, to have a complete transfer application, we're looking for an online application through our Future 49er portal. There's a $75 application fee, and then we'll require your official high school transcript and a transcript from any previously attended college or university. Once we have those materials, we ask that students allow about six to eight weeks for a decision to be made. All right, so again, I did want to highlight our future 49er portal. This is essentially where you'll uh, apply to UNC Charlotte, but also where you can start hearing from us. Um, just create that portal no matter where you are in your transfer process. It will allow you to learn about upcoming events. Uh, you can also register for in-person and virtual tour experiences through this portal. So I did want you all to kind of know that we are hosting visits in person, uh, but we also have virtual visits for you all, uh, specifically for our transfer population. And we have a virtual open house coming up April 17th, and we'd love to see you all there. All right, and then I did wanna leave uh, by giving you all our transfer team's contact information. So we have, as the largest transfer institution in North Carolina, we have a large staff here to help you with your transition. So definitely feel free to contact any one of us um, and you see our general information here uh, on there as well. Thanks everyone. Great, thank you, Megan. And next up is York College of Pennsylvania. Sorry, I, I lost my screen for a second. I'm here, I promise. Um, okay, now I gotta go back to my share. Okay, can everyone see that? I'm sorry. Let's see here. There we go, okay. Excuse me. So my name is Erica Sheeler. I am the Assistant Director of Transfer Admissions here at York College. Uh, we are located in central Pennsylvania. We are a Phi Theta Kappa Excellence in Community College Transfer Honor Roll member, and we have been for the last seven years. So that means we are very transfer friendly and we love our transfer students. We do accept up to 95 transfer credits from a four-year school and 75 credits from a community college. 
So uh, this is a little bit more about your college and where we are located. We are located in York, Pennsylvania, as I said, which is basically sits right in the heart of the jobs rich mid Atlantic. We are 30 minutes from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania and Lancaster, Pennsylvania, only 45 minutes from Baltimore, Maryland, two hours from Philadelphia and Washington DC, and then only about three hours from New York City. Um, so we are pretty much nice there in central mid Atlantic region, lots of job rich areas and big cities close to us. So what kind of students is a great fit for your college? So we have a very personalized attention. We have very small class sizes. You really get to know your professors and your other students in your classes. Also students who might wanna get involved. Um, we do a lot of research products, lots of student leadership opportunities, um, a bunch of campus recreation opportunities for our students. So a lot of our students really get involved uh, while they're here with us as students. We're about 70% resident students. So students are here, they wanna, they wanna be here, they wanna have fun on the weekends, they don't pack up their things and leave. Um, on the weekends, there's a lot of fun things to do. We want, to, we want you to feel confident that you'll land a job and start a career. We have a wonderful career development center that will help you with that. And also students that want a great value compared to many other private colleges in our region, uh, we're about the fraction of a cost for the private institution. So a little bit more about York. This is kind of like a drone um, aspect of York College. So everything you see that's basically that tan color is York College. We have about 4,000 full-time undergraduate students here at York. Uh, we have 70 majors and 60 minors. Some of our most popular majors are nursing, engineering, business, education, and criminal justice. We have 182 full-time faculty members on staff with us, which gives us a 15 to one student to faculty ratio and an average class size of only 19. So again, a lot more about that small class size is really focused on getting to know your professors um, and other students in your class. So we do guarantee housing for um, all four years or however long you're with us as a transfer student. There's traditional dorms, apartments, suites, houses, townhouses, so a lot of options for our students. Vehicles are permitted on campus. Um, it's $100 per year for a parking permit with us. Again, a little bit more about getting involved. Uh, we have over 100 clubs and student-run organizations, so there's plenty to get involved with. We have over 100 events here on campus, basically per semester, so there's always something to do. Even with everything going on lately, we've been doing lots of virtual events and smaller events still with our students. We also have 23 Division III athletic teams. If you're interested in uh, being an athlete with us, we would be able to help you with that information as well. So a little bit more about finances, because of course that's a big question when you're looking at transferring schools. So our tuition uh, for the 2020-21 year is $22,350. Um, and then you would add that room and board on. So your final cost would be about $34,400. But of course that's before any scholarships and financial aid are involved in that. Our transfer merit-based scholarships, which you don't have to do anything other than apply for, um, the school would be ranged from $1,000 to $5,000 scholars, um, $5,000. Also, if you're coming from a community college, uh, we do have a PTK scholarship available to our students. And we also participate in Raise Me if you're interested or, or know about Raise Me. They're basically a website with micro scholarships that students can apply for. 99% um, of our new students receive financial aid. And that's again, just wanting to fill out that FAFSA. Uh, you, can, you can get all of that uh, information. If you have any other questions about the financial aid process, usually our transfer students are pros and kind of know that whole process, but uh, we're happy to help with that as well. So a little bit more about the application process. Uh, we have an application directly on our website at ycp.edu slash apply. That is free of cost. And we can also take the transfer common application as well, which is also free of cost. Um, and we are rolling the mission. So you can apply to your college at any point and you'll get a decision within about two weeks. Uh, the required materials for application are um, an official college transcript. So from any college you, has you have attended in the past. Also, if you did college in high school um, or if you did any AP classes, we can accept those as well. We'll just need those specific transcripts from you. If you have less than 15 credits coming in from a college, we would then need your high school transcript or SAT scores, AT, ACT scores, whichever you, uh, whichever you took. So that's only if you have less than 15 credits. So uh, if you have more than that, you can just give us your high, or I'm sorry, give us your college transcript and we can just use that. Uh, recommended materials, so these are not required uh, to get an application decision, but we do, recommend you to do an essay, personal statement, just a few paragraphs about yourself, and then letters of recommendation as well for maybe one or two um, college um, professors or advisors or anything like that, just so we get to know you a little bit more through the process. 
So a little bit more about the transfer process. We do accept about, as I talked about, about 75 credits from a community college and 95 credits um, from a four-year institution. Uh, the big thing that you wanna do is apply and get accepted. Um, the credit evaluation will come to you within about one to two weeks. Your financial aid package will come to you within two to three weeks, and then you can schedule classes. Um, and if you have any questions, this is my information. I will also drop it in the chat. Thank you very much and have a good day. Great, thank you, Erica. And next up is the University of Lynchburg. Uh, hold on, let me try that again. Um, okay, here we go. All right, so hi, my name is Susan Hogg and I'm with the University of Lynchburg. I'm the Associate Director for Transfer and Adult Students. And thanks for having me today. We're known as one of the colleges that changes lives. Changing lives is what we do best and it shows. We rank among the region's best colleges and universities and we're one of the best values around. Lynchburg instantly feels like family and becomes your second home forever. We have about 2,000 undergraduate students and 1,000 graduate students. We have small classes with big ideas and one-on-one -on -one interaction. Our class size is 16 to one and our faculty to student ratio is 11 to one. We are the type of school that you're really gonna get to know your professor and your professor is really gonna get to know you. We, have, we offer more than 100 majors, minors, and pre-professional programs. We have a College of Arts and Sciences, Business, Education, Health Science, and Westover Honors College. We probably have what you're looking for. If you change your mind, you have choices. But the best part of all this is that 91% of our students are satisfied with their overall academic experience. Maybe you already know you wanna be a physician assistant, physical therapist, or athletic trainer. We have these pathways to hold seats for Lynchburg students in our master's or doctorate programs. Make sure you check out our website for more information. And you did hear that right. We have direct admit pathways for our doctorate in physical therapy and PA medicine, along with a few other of our graduate level programs. We offer hands-on learning and real life experiences to prepare you for your career. For example, criminology majors learn fingerprinting, practice surveillance tactics, and even turn campus into a mock crime scene. Our health science majors have the opportunity to participate in clinicals for an internship and explore the human body in our cadaver lab. Our business students use real funds from the university's endowment to buy and sell on real financial aid markets. Also, best in the world, that's not something you hear every day, but recently University of Lynchburg student Joel Rainey got word that his overall score in the business strategy game, a global business simulation that involved undergraduate business students from 385 colleges and universities in 37 countries had tied for first. He is a community college transfer student and we are very proud of Joel. Another core principle is high impact learning. It helps you take your education to the next level. So what does that mean? It means internships. Nick built telescope parts on a 3D printer for the Belk Observatory and was able to receive an internship with the Department of Energy. It means study abroad. Almost one third of our students study abroad. Our students study in Vietnam, Iceland, India, Guatemala, Italy, all over the world. There are opportunities and scholarships that make study abroad an option for everyone. Finally, it means research. More than half of our students do research with their professors. It's a big reason why so many of our students get into graduate school. And in the lab or out, your professors will know your name. Their main goal is to support you and help you succeed. We're invested in your future and ready to help you find and reach your goals. Here's what a few of our graduates are doing now. Landon is a professional gamer and his Call of Duty team has almost 800,000 subscribers on YouTube. Nat was getting pay paying gigs from nationally recognized athletic teams before she graduated. Now she shoots full photos full time for Duke. Jamar is a senior policy coordinator with the Department of Health and Human Services and serves as our alumni board chair. Emily has mentored several communication students and a senior manager of audience at USA Today. Francesca is head of American Solutions Architecture and customer su success for Amazon. Twice a year, alumni come back for Hornet to Hornet Day, where they meet, network with, and advise current students. 
It's not all studying at Lynchburg. After class, there's always something to do with your friends. Fraternity and sorority life, 70 clubs, and more than 2,000 events each year. We promise you won't get bored. We're pretty serious about sports here too. More than half of our students are involved in sports in one way or another. And we're the only D3 team streaming games online at ESPN. We also offer sports at club and intramural levels. We are the type of school that you, will, you may see your faculty or staff at these events. And you may even see the president. Co college should be an adventure and we have adventures galore. The outdoor leadership program takes students rafting, hiking, caving, and more. It's, a, it's affordable too. Most trips are under $15. The James River runs right through downtown Lynchburg and the mountains are 30 minutes away. So there's always activities going on. So what do you do next? You can, you can schedule a visit through our website. You will see firsthand not only a beautiful campus but our warm and friendly atmosphere. We can also schedule you to meet with a faculty member and do an unofficial credit evaluation. Next apply, the fastest results will be from applying on our website. I promise you will not be disappointed. So here at Lynchburg, you're home. You'll get a life-changing education at an affordable price, but more than that, you'll find friends for life in a place you will always call home. My best advice as you're navigating this process is to come visit the school that you're interested in and take a tour. We would love to have you visit in Lynchburg. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you. Great, thank you so much. And next up is the University of Colorado Boulder. Okay, hello everybody. Let me share my screen here. Okay, good afternoon. Um, my name is Katie Carter and I'm filling in for my colleague Jennifer Glenn, um, who unfortunately was having some internet issues, but I will be sure to provide her contact information for you all so that you can contact her if you have any questions. The University of Colorado Boulder is a large public tier one research institution located in Boulder, Colorado, which is at the base of the Rocky Mountains. So we do have a couple of transfer students that I would like to highlight who have graduated in the last couple of years. Um, Francisco was born and raised in Colorado and he came from a Colorado community college. We have about 65% of our transfer students being at Colorado residents and about 35% of our transfer students coming from out of state. 22% of all of our transfer students are considered to be first generation students. We also have a population of about 38.1% female and 28% of our students identify as students of color. Um, Paige graduated from CU Boulder about two or three years ago um, and she took advantage of something called Europe. And this is the undergraduate research opportunity program. And this allows students to create a research project that might not be funded by a professor or a class that they're taking, but they actually get to create it and the university will fund their research. CU Boulder is a beautiful campus. Like I said, it's located at the base of the Rocky Mountains. We have the Flatirons um, right next to our campus with hundreds of miles of hiking trails um, surrounding campus, as well as we are about 45 minutes from the closest ski and snowboard resort. At CU Boulder, we encourage students to customize their education um, and really start their journey by taking advantage of all of the things that we have to offer. So at CU Boulder, we have, here, there we go. <laughs> um, we have over 100 different majors spread across eight different uh, colleges, schools, and programs, 50 plus minors that you can add to your degree. 40 concurrent um, five-year bachelor master's degree programs and over a hundred different certificate programs that you can add on to that major. Maybe you added on to a minor as well. Um, so definitely encouraging students to participate in all of the opportunities we have here at CU Boulder from an academic standpoint. If you are interested in applying to CU Boulder, we do require a couple of different things. So we do have our own transfer application. We do not use the common application. So you will want to complete the CU Boulder transfer student specific application online. There is a $50 application fee. This application fee is $70 for international applicants. However, we do have application fee waiver codes available. So if this would prevent you from applying, please reach out to my colleague Jennifer and she will provide you with one of those. We require a personal statement. So this is one essay. Um, that's the only essay that we will require. And then we will accept um, unofficial high school and college transcripts. 
Um, the pandemic definitely allowed us to start accepting those. We would eventually need the official copies, but for now the unofficial is great. Um, and then the ACT or SAT scores, if students have completed less than 24 hours of college credit, um, we will need to see that SAT or ACT score. Right now, we are currently accepting applications for the fall of 2021. The deadline will be June 1st. Um, we often extend this deadline, and if students have extenuating circumstances, definitely feel free to contact your admission counselor and we can work with you. But we do accept applications year round, um, and these are the deadlines if you are interested in a different semester other than the fall. We also encourage students to really take advantage of all of the things that we have at CU Boulder outside of just academics. We understand that at the end of the day, you're here for an education, but there's so much more to the college experience than just going to class and taking tests. So to highlight a couple of things in um, the city of Boulder, Fair and Field, we call it the backyard of our campus. So students will go out there and study, um, play uh, flag football, ultimate frisbee, or even just sit and listen to a podcast. We also have one of the top rec centers in the country with a couple of different pools, one of which is shaped like our mascot, which is a buffalo, which is super fun, um, as well as an indoor rock climbing wall. We have Chautauqua Park, which houses all of the uh, hiking trails that I mentioned earlier. We have hundreds of miles of hiking trails just a stone's throw away from campus. We have Creek Path where students can bike. And then we also have um, Eldora Mountain. Like I said, this is gonna be the closest mountain to CU Boulder and it's only about 45 minutes away from our campus. We have El Dorado Canyon, a place where students can go rock climbing or go hiking. And then we also have the Boulder Reservoir about 15 minutes away from campus where if you're looking for a little bit of a beach, I know Colorado is a landlocked state, but we do have a couple of different opportunities for students to get outside, um, get near the water and really just enjoy the great outdoors. We are on social media. We do offer a lot of different um, uh, uh, ask me anything with our current students. We do Instagram live events for our transfer students. So if you have um, an interest in attending any of these, definitely feel free to follow us on social media. And then, like I said, Jennifer Glenn is the admission counselor for the state of Virginia. So if you do have any questions, definitely feel free to reach out to her and she will be able to assist you. And if anyone has any questions, I'm happy to answer those. Great, thank you so much. And uh, we do have a few minutes for some Q&A. Um, so I'm gonna ask all of our presenters to come back on camera and respond to this question. What advice would you give someone going through the college search process, or the transfer search process? And we'll start back in the order that you all presented with Norfolk State University. All right. It's saying I can't. Has the host stopped it? Did I? Okay. There we go. I'm sorry, Matt. Could you please repeat that question? Sure. Uh, so what advice would you give someone going through the transfer uh, search process? Okay. Uh, great question. Um, I would say uh, do your due diligence, do your research, find out what schools um, have your degree program. Um, you know, find out what schools offer the best degree program that fits the major you want to um, end up majoring in. Learn about the programs and how the course equivalencies would work for you. A lot of times, I think we can all agree some of the main questions a transfer student has is, how many credits are you going to take and when can I graduate? So, you know, I, I know at Norfolk State, we really try to um, help the student with that process so that they aren't walking into something blindly. I would also say if you're using financial aid, um, go ahead and, and apply for financial aid sooner. It's better to have it and not need it versus need it and not have it. Um, but one of the best things that I would definitely say is do your due diligence, research other schools, um, and find out what they offer in terms of degree programs and find out what the transfer process looks like for yourself. Thank you. Yep, so Greg Davis here from Marymount Manhattan College. Um, just kind of um, 
uh, hopping off of that, I would definitely say um, get a clear understanding of transfer credits. Um, that's definitely a, a big deciding factor. You definitely don't want to uh, get into a situation where you you've, you've lost work that you um, that you have put in the effort to to achieve. Um, also, I think I think a, a big thing is is get a sense of the community, um, specific the transfer community. I say um, I was a transfer student myself, and I kind of came into a, a unfortunate situation where I knew a lot of the people at the school, but if I didn't, I would definitely would have felt lost and coming in as a transfer student definitely is different than a than a freshman student feels sometimes it feels like you have to catch up just socially um meeting friends and and all of that and getting in friend groups but find out different ways to get involved what does the school offer in terms of clubs what do they offer in terms of specific transfer students um because at the end of the day um you know, I, I think I think that if you're able to find that community and especially some some other transfer students that that have been through the same journey with you, it's it's certainly helpful. Thank you. Yeah, to kind of continue on what everyone's saying, I would say to, you know, really try to find your fit, um, try to do as many virtual visits and, you know, panel experiences and in person visits when they are available because you know, you're going to be spending four years of your life um, at this institution. So you want to be comfortable. You want to uh, feel like they will help you achieve your professional goals. And, but also you wanna have fun during the college experience and, and feel again, comfortable and safe on that campus. So you know, just really trying to find your fit, um, whether that's a large institution, maybe a smaller institution, really doing that research uh, to figure that all of those things out. I pretty much <laughs> are thinking the same exact thing as everyone said, but I'll just kind of reiterate, you definitely want to visit campus if you can. Um, I'm not, I'm not everyone is accepting visitors right now. We are, since we are a small private school, uh, we're accepting a limited amount of visitors. So if you can visit some schools, we definitely suggest doing that because I really feel like that's how you're going to know if it's a good fit for you, see if the people talk to professors, talk to the admissions counselors, talk to whoever you can while you're visiting, um, and definitely looking at the transfer credit process and how they bring in your credits. Um, I can look at credits even before, like even if you're just thinking about it, you can send an unofficial transcript. I'm happy to kind of take a look and see how credits transfer in. Um, so those are kind of the suggestions I would have, just like everyone else. <laughs> and uh, I would echo every, what everyone has said, but yeah, come visit us, we are open. Um, we're real close to the Blue Ridge Mountains. We're in Central Virginia. Uh, it's a beautiful campus. It's the type of place you're going to get to know your professor. Your professor is going to get to know you. But visit, visit, visit. You will find your place if you visit. Um, um, and it sounds like a lot of us are open. So please, please look, check us out and uh, schedule a tour. I too agree with what all of the wonderful panelists have said. I think the one thing that I would add, and it kind of goes along with finding your fit, is if you are transferring, um, identify why you are transferring. Why are you leaving your current institution? Are you going from a community college to a four-year? Are you going from a four-year to a four-year? Um, identify why you're transferring, because I think that that can help you um, identify what qualities you want in the institution that you ultimately end up at. So I would definitely encourage students, find their fit, figure out what your motivation is behind leaving your current institution because that can really give you a lot of insight as to what you should be looking for in the place that you end up. Excellent. Well, thank you all. We are just about out of time um, for this session. So I want to say thank you for joining us um, to our attendees, to our presenters. Um, and then after you close this window, a very quick four question survey will appear. We do appreciate your feedback. Please do sign up for additional sessions happening this evening. And um, a recording of this session will be available in about a week at strivescan.com slash Virginia. So thank you all so much and have a great rest of your night. Thank you.